Okay, we're starting. Welcome, welcome. No animals today. They're all quiet. I'm going to concentrate. I will have animal visitors again in the future. Anyway, um, we should finish up the chapters in the historical methods book today. Uh, I have here, do, 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 share screen. Here is, if you notice what I have and I made it live and I did make the date correct this time, I have an extra credit question with a question that was covered both last time and will be covered today. Um, again, so it's, I'll go over question just to make you, um, just to keep you alive. It's extra credit. Now, one thing that Zoom does, it, if you get the wrong answer on the extra credit, um, it takes off five points. I'll go back to the grade book and fix, fix that. So, I mean, if you try and miss it, you won't get any credit, but I won't, um, I won't penalize you for it. So five extra points, one question from uh, actually both today and uh, Tuesday's presentations. Again, just to keep you um, on your toes, keep you involved. And these things do add up. When I do the final grades, you know, the ones who tried all the way through, not only do you get the extra points, you get the tiebreaker. Anyway, so that's, you have until Saturday, the 27th, to do the tiebreaker, uh, not the tiebreaker, to do the extra credit. And then next week, we will have a test. We should finish up the lecture part today. And then we will have a review next Tuesday, and the text will be test will be online next. Yes, we have a raised hand. We have a question from Claire Moreau. Yes, Claire Moreau. Um, yeah. So you said the test will be online. So is it going to be? Test will be online. So we're just going to do it like you said on our own time, not during class time. On your own time. Those of people right. who need extra time, you have it. It is open text, open book open note, open PowerPoint. That's the good news. The bad news is I'm not going to ask you to repeat stuff from the class. I will say, um, you know, um, what, how would, um, you know, how would a nationalist view the withdrawal from Afghanistan? And the answer would be they would be, a nationalist would, uh, look at the good that America has done. So it's not repeating back stuff, it's using the stuff. So, <laughs> but anyway, I will have a, and it's not live yet, but I have a test review guide next time. We'll go over the test review and next Thursday, we don't have a class meeting, you can use the class time to take the test. So that's up and coming. <laughs> anyway, let's get through the rest of this stuff. Oh, we have somebody have a question. Currently been going in between history class and did not see the paper that was due. Oh, okay, paper that was due, you can make it up. Uh, again, I'll have to take off for lateness because everybody else got it. Anyway, um, let's go through. This should be fairly quick and painless. Stuff from our textbook. Again, the STAM history methodology textbook. Um, that first book covering the whole thing. Like I said, it's a lot of blah, 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 blah. A lot of repetitious stuff today. Again, looking at a historical presentation, do something that matters? Is it interesting and relevant? Certainly Nathan Bedford Forrest and the statues are important. Now, the political, his um, military campaigns, 
nothing really much new. We know about those, but the statue is the relevant thing. Have you anything to add? Yes, you do. Can you pull it off? Do you have access? Yes, we had access. Now, if you were doing something again on military campaigns, you would need archives and stuff from the, you know, from museums all over, you had to go to Memphis. So no, if you're gonna do a good job on forest military campaigns, probably couldn't do it. So you wouldn't have the time or the resources. Do you have access to material? Okay, Google and Wikipedia. What is wrong with um, what is wrong with a Google search? Anybody? It's not credible, and neither is Wikipedia. Yeah, it's not the bet. It doesn't rate your sources. It gives you the the best. You had another another contribution or question? Okay, I'll show you, for example, we will do Google, ooh, it's Chinese, something Chinese this year. Anyway, uh, for a statue, let us look up our topic for the week. And the third thing that they have, Atlas Obscura. It is not, come on. You can see bizarre, deranged looking depiction. Uh, that is not a definitive source, that's somebody's opinion. So that's not the best source. Somebody had a question. Popularity, not correctness, exactly. And that will come up on the test, hint, hint, hint. Wikipedia, people edit and change all the time. Okay, is your topic worth a book or just a paper? Again, the statue is a paper, the career of Bedford Forest is a book, okay? Should also have, oh, we have another question. Yes. We have another question. Okay. Uh, when you're looking at the who, not just Bedford Forest, but look at others, look at his critics. What? What does hold the topic together? Should it be broken down? This is the biggest thing that happens in our essays, or one of the big things. People do two or three different essays. When they talk about the printing press, they'll talk about politics, they'll talk about religion, religion, technology. You should really just keep it to one topic. You know, it should stand on its own. Loc you know, where location and weather. Climate. For example, we're talking about the Civil War. I am currently on Lookout Mountain. I'm a thousand, I'm 1100 feet above you. Hello. It's, um, it's about five degrees cooler where I am. And where I am, we had the battle above the clouds. But you know what? It wasn't a big battle. The where it looked lovely and we have nice paintings, but it wasn't the big battle. The big battle was the next day. So the climate, we can write about it, but we write about the battle above the clouds because it looked nice, but it wasn't a big deal. So the weather did make a difference. When history, duh, but look at the technology and the politics. One part of the where was Bedford Forest was really good at cutting our communication lines of the northerners. He knew how to screw up northern technology. How did groups or individuals make a difference? Union the Klan, African-American groups, all of them had an impact. Okay, here's your papers. Once you have an idea, sum it up. This is another good thing about presenting history. Say what you can do in a sentence or two. If you can't, it's being vague. 
This happens a lot on a lot of your essays. If you can't really say what you're trying to say, eh, it's not working. Independent and dependent variables. I talked a little about that. Author Jeremy Diamond says we're speaking English because of guns, germs, and steel. That the Western civilization advanced above the Chinese and others because they used weapons, they had mechanization and germs, which wiped out the Native Americans. That's why we're speaking English because the Native Americans weren't here. Avoid cause and effect though. There is lots of things why we're speaking um, English. For example, we're not speaking French because the French came to, uh, to buy and sell pelts and gold and convert the Indians. The English came to stay. There was a lot more English, so we're speaking English. So there's a lot of things why we're speaking English. It's not just one. Make good um, notes, we know, yeah. I, I was, so, well, I, I, could, I could see why I, 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 you would, I, I could see that be the case with why English is the majority language here in the US, but, there, but, the, but, but, but just, just be glad that there, there's no official language here in the US. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we've, we talk about that. Um, we, America, the question is, are we, an Anglo-English society, or we are more diverse cultural one, that's one we're, we wrestle with. Okay, we have a question in chat. Okay. Can I scroll up, please? Sure. But you know what? I'm scrolling up on all of this. I have these posted. You can look at all, all of these yourself. These are just basic stuff I'm going over quickly. You can look at them yourself, the book does it. I'm just getting through the basic, like I said at the outset, the eh, regular stuff. I'll get to some more interesting things in a bit. I'm just going over the book. Make good notes, primer, and plus a lot of this, I've already gone through. The, the book goes again and again and again. Primary sources are actual witnesses to history. The good news about a primary source, they were there, they can tell you what happened, but they don't have the context of what it means. Secondary sources analyze, but they weren't really there. Libraries, we'll talk about libraries right now. See, we'll go through a few things fairly quick. Again, it's pretty dry. Libraries, musty old historical materials. Lots of stuff at the library. Primary sources, archives, people who've done things, recordings, videos of stuff. Um, at, the, um, at the UTC library, we had a sociologist who is the expert on snake handling religions in the United States. And so you have videos of people who if they believe hard enough, the snake won't bite them. So you have things like that. We have old things from the Civil War, secondary sources, books, magazines, journals. Good thing to look at the bibliography of an article, see what sources they had. See, here is all our happy stuff. You can look at yourself. Internet searches are good. We talked about Google and Wikipedia. A lot of stuff is not digital and not online. You have to go to the library uh, to see, or a museum to see an archive, to see the old maps, to see the diaries. Maybe somebody's family has some historical material. You can't all get it digitally. And the stuff you don't get digital, you might have to pay for. Good stuff in the library, catalogs and digital stuff. Okay, we, we don't need to look at a topic. 
you did a fine job yourself. Now, the sticky part of today, explanation and writing. Keep on message. Again, everything uh, should re refer to your original thesis that we should keep or not keep the statue. You know, just if it doesn't have anything to do with the statue, if it has something to do with the military history, don't do it. Bias. Bum, 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 bum. Bias. As we said earlier, it's all biased. It's all subjective. Every word you make is a word choice. If I said someone said something, it's a different meaning than screamed. You know, those are word choices make a difference. How you organize your material. So you're always making subjective court, subjective choices. So make your choices based on fact. Again, the facts are Bedford Forrest was a successful general. He was a clan founder and his statue is at the state capitol. Some people think we, it's preserving our history to keep the statue. Some people think we should take it down. Those are the facts. Everything you say to back one side or another has to be based on those facts. But you can argue it other, other ways. Context related, the context for the Bedford Forest statue has changed. In, uh, you know, when they first put it up, we were honoring the history. And then as we look back at the history, we find that a lot of people put those statues there to intimidate people of color and keep them in their place. So there's a different context. What does what does that mean and what should we do? In the light of the Black Lives Matters protests, what do we do? The context has changed. Status, what have other people said? This is what I wanted you to do and most of you did it. Look at what other people said to provide some insight. And quite frankly, the, the history or how we look at the history changes. Statues like that used to be okay. Confederate flags used to be okay. When I was a kid, we had the Dukes of Hazard. You had the General Lee Carr. So, you know, with the Confederate flag, can't do that today. I had, a, uh, someone had a question? Okay. Uh, what gaps? Generalizations. Don't use, when I say you're do, being vague in an essay, don't use terms like the media. What's wrong with calling the media, the media? What's wrong with that? Anybody? It can refer to multiple different forms of media. Bingo. That there are, when we say the media, there is, Fox News on the right, there's MSNBC on the left. There's Newsmax, there's the Huffington Post. They all have different viewpoints. News and entertainment. Um, ABC is owned by Disney. You're not gonna see anything mm, against Disney on it. Disney owns uh, Marvel. You'll see a lot more commercials for Marvel on ABC than you will on CBS, which is owned by Sony. So yeah, you can't generalize, it's dangerous. Wait, wait I thought CBS was owned by Paramount. By who? Paramount. Paramount. Um, maybe, okay, I'll have to look that up. Well, there's, Sony owns one of them. Uh, Comcast owns NBC. It changes, I'll have to look that up. Sony did own CBS and maybe it's changed. Um, but yeah, uh, anyway, uh, we'll, we'll check that. 
Um, but it is a broad term. And it is not like a bunch of, you know, gay liberal abortion doctors are meeting in New York and LA to decide what goes on the air. It's a lot more complicated than that. So media is a difficult term. People, what people think or what society thinks. Different people in society think different things. This is when I say you're being vague in an essay. That's what I mean. Oh, we will do fine. I did upgrade, leave me alone. Self-discipline, be aware of your own context. Causation, events have multiple causes. Avoid making generalizations. Okay, theory, the last thing we can cover in time. Theory is something you could provoke support even through research. If it's not something you can prove, then it's a concept. Theory is ideas that are supported by research. Media cultivation, you get an idea, it, it happens. You, you see something violent in the media and you think, hmm, I can do that. Uh, it might make you more violent like that. So media um, is, um, you know, again, media violence is a topic. Agenda setting and cultivation are theories that apply for it. Here's a video that I can get through that pretty much Feels says weird. Picking it up. See, Marvel like Studios, Disney. We need to get something straight. Evolution by natural selection is a theory. So is climate change. But people keep saying that like it's a bad thing. Okay, theory. What is truth? Are there different levels of truth? Are some truths truthier than others? Well, I don't know, but I do know this. Science is the absolute best tool we have for understanding how the universe works. And theory is not a four letter word. If we're gonna trust science together, the least we can do is speak the same language. Words like fact, theory, hypothesis, and law mean something totally different to a scientist than the way they're used in everyday speech. And the same thing so in history as well as science. Facts are really just observations about the world around us. And we observe things every day, like that it's bright outside when I look out the window. And we often develop explanations for those observations, like, okay, the sun is probably up. Congrats, we just developed a hypothesis. But a hypothesis isn't something you prove. It's something you test. So let's walk outside. It's bright, the sun is up, hypothesis confirmed. Way to go, we did a science. We often come up with multiple hypotheses to explain an observation. We just eliminate the ones that are wrong. What's left over is not a theory or a law or an ultimate truth. It's just a possible explanation for something, one that can lead us to new hypotheses, which may agree or disagree with the original one. It's a never ending story, only without the big fluffy drag. So basically- Hey, it's Professor Dave. Uh, I want to tell you about the scientific method. He knows a lot about the science. Sorry about that. Where is this guy? Anyway. I don't know, that was another theory. All right. Here's what theory is. We can pile these all up and turn them into something greater, a theory. A theory is the way we know something works based on the evidence we've collected and Lots all of the hypotheses, hypotheses that we've successfully put to the test. The best thing about a theory is that we can use it to make predictions and not just about the way things are, but how they will be. You may have heard someone say something like, I have a theory about why cats purr. I think it's because they're actually tiny robots and those are their gears. Well, that's not a theory. That's actually a hypothesis. It's something that could be tested, but don't try this at home. This cycle, taking facts and observations, thinking up possible explanations, testing those explanations, and then making predictions based upon them, that's what this whole science thing is about. Being a theory isn't a... Okay, back to it, since we're running low on time. A theory is something that's tested out 
that works that we can see happens again, again in history. That the Civil War was caused by slavery or against slavery. You could say the theory that it was states' rights. You could say it was a lot of things. You can argue it either way. That's the theory. In media, again, if you watch a lot of Fox News, you're going to get a different picture than you're going to get in MSNBC. That is agenda setting or framing. You'll get a different frame around the news from Fox than you do in MSNBC. Those are different theories. We know media frames what we see. We know it sets an agenda and we keep doing it again and again. You know, climate change. Again, we test different things and we could ask who, why is it happening? We can say, hey, it's happening. Lots of theories on why. And the ones that test out are the ones that we can support. But things change. You know, you might find new information that challenges theories. So we're always finding new stuff. The difference here is for really for you that a topic is media affects media violence. That's not a theory. The theory is how it works. We can theorize that if you see a lot of violent media, you may act more violently. That could be a theory. Cultivation and agenda setting, those are theories that say that's how it works. So those are theories that explain how the topics work. So, and that's how it works in all, all things, yeah. Okay, have to do one thing because I'm running out of time. Narrative, we write stories that are narratives that tell stories. And just the facts, it's kind of boring, it's a list. So we tell a story about somebody, but again, you're making subjective choices. Copyright, I will get to next time as we run out of time. Uh, we'll finish up copyright and review for a test next time. Questions? Raised hand, question, yeah. Any question? Okay. We'll figure this out. We will do it next time. We'll finish up and review for the test next time. Running out of time here, I will talk at you next time. Have a good weekend.